Hi everybody, today we're going to talk about graphs of polynomial functions. So let's review really quick what a polynomial function looks like. It looks like f of x is a to the n, x to the n, plus a sub n minus 1, x to the n minus 1, kind of continues down to a1, x plus a0. Important here that all of these exponents are integers that are greater than or equal to 0, so I'm not going to have any fractional exponents, any negative exponents, just nice little numbers here. The a's can be anything, so any kind of real number can be the coefficient. This is kind of the expanded form of how to write a polynomial. We're going to deal a lot with polynomials that are already factored. What I want you to think about as we start to graph them is that polynomial functions that are degree 2 or more are going to have graphs that don't have sharp corners. They're going to be kind of smooth curves, which we also call continuous. What I want you to think about is you could draw this without picking up your pencil. You could just keep kind of moving along, going up and down to draw these functions. There are important points on the function that we want to talk about. Most important would probably be the zeros of the polynomials, and there's a lot of things that come out of this. So one thing we have is that if f of r is equal to zero for any real number r, then r is a real zero of the function f of x. And this means a lot of things. It means that x minus r is a factor of f of x. It means r is an x-intercept of f of x, and r is a solution to f of x equals zero. So we kind of get multiple things out of this one little piece of information. So let's try to use that. Let's find the zeros of f of x is 3 times x minus 2 times x plus 4 squared. We'll take each of the factors, like x minus 2, set it equal to 0. We'll take the x plus 4 squared and set it equal to 0. x minus 2 being 0 says that x is equal to 2. If x plus 4 squared is equal to 0, then x plus 4 is 0. So we can drop that exponent. You can take the square root if you want, but really square root of 0 is 0, so I'm just going to drop exponents all along, and I get x is equal to negative 4. So I have two zeros here. I have 2 and I have negative 4. The degree comes from adding up all of the exponents to each of the factors. So what you want to think about is if we were to expand this polynomial, the x plus 4 squared would give me an x squared. I would have times the x minus 2, and that x squared times x would leave me with x cubed. So we are not going to expand this all out, but we are going to think about adding up these exponents, and our degree is 3. Remember, degree is just the highest power of any particular term in the polynomial. Let's do one more like that. I have f of x is one third of x times x plus five times x minus eight cubed. I see three x's. If you want to keep the one third with the x, that's okay. We'll set it equal to zero. x plus five is zero, and x minus eight, and I'll write it as cubed, is zero. With the one third of x being zero, you could think multiply both sides by three, and you're still gonna get zero. So x is zero is one of my zeros x plus 5 says x is negative 5. Again, I'm going to drop the exponent of 3. I have x minus 8 is 0, so x is equal to 8. So three zeros this time. Go back to the degree. With the degree, I'm looking at the overall exponents for each of the terms. So I have an x. I have x plus 5. I have the x minus 8 cubed, which says 3 plus 1 plus 1. So I'm taking these exponents, I'm adding them up, I get 5. So my degree is 5. So let's go a different way. Let's make a polynomial. So we're going to start with making a degree 3 polynomial whose zeros are negative 2, 0, and 2. So I'm going to call that f of x. And remember, we kind of always make them backwards. So negative 2 is really x plus 2. 0 just gives me x, and then 2 gives me x minus 2. If you need help with that, you could start with x equals negative 2. Set that equal to 0, which is move the x over. You would get x plus 2 is 0, which is this factor. That might help if you're having any issues kind of thinking about flipping them. This does what we want. We have degree 3. We have our three zeros. If you want to add a coefficient, you could, but I'm going to stop right there. The next one says also make a degree 3 polynomial, but this time our zeros are negative 3 and 1, so I only have two of them. So I know I have f of x is equal to, I have an x plus 3, and I have an x minus 1. So what I need to do is keep these zeros, but make the degree higher, which means square one of them. 
not both of them, one of them. So you could choose, you could do x plus 3 squared times x minus 1, or if you wanted to, you could do x plus 3 times x minus 1 squared. But we have to make sure that power is there and that you don't add any new zeros to the function. So these powers we're talking about for each of the little factors, we really have a name for that called multiplicity. So if m is the highest power for which x minus r is a factor of f of x, then m is called the multiplicity of r. So each of the factors have their own multiplicity. Let's look at this example, y equals 2x cubed times x minus 1 squared times x plus 2 to the fourth. And we are going to find the zeros and the multiplicities for each of the factors. So I have the 2x cubed, which says we have a 0 at x equals 0, and the multiplicity, which I call m, is 3. So it's just the power for the 0. My next one, I have x minus 1 squared. Well, that says x is equal to 1, and my multiplicity is 2. Then x plus 2 to the 4th has a 0 at negative 2 and a multiplicity of 4. I want to point out that the multiplicities really tell us the degree. If I add these up, 3 plus 2 plus 4, that is equal to 9, which is our degree of the polynomial. Multiplicities are super important because they tell us a lot about the graph. And we're going to break it into two parts, even and odd. So when m is even, f of x is going to touch the graph at x equals r. So I put up the graph of x squared because I think we're familiar with it. And you can see I'm just touching the graph at the origin. I'm not going through it. I'm staying positive, so I'm just kind of coming down and going back up. So you can think about it as touching a turn if that really helps you, but I want you to see this idea of touching at the intercept. Let's compare that to an odd multiplicity, and an odd multiplicity is going to cross the graph when x is equal to r. So you can see here I was above the graph, and now I am below the graph, and I went through the graph at the zero. So I think evens touch, odds cross. So look at this function, f of x is negative 1 fourth times x minus 1 times x plus 2 squared times x minus 4 cubed. We are going to find the multiplicity of each factor of this function and talk about the degree of the overall function. So I'm going to make a little chart. I like to make a chart to kind of organize what I'm doing. And the things that are going to go in this chart is we want to know the zero or the root, so whichever one you want to call it. We want to find the multiplicity, and then we want to know, well, is it going to touch or cross the x-axis when it gets to that zero? So I have three zeros. From x minus 1, I have a 1. From x plus 2 squared, I have negative 2. And from x minus 4, I have positive 4. The multiplicities are the exponents, which happen to be 1, 2, 3. When you look at the multiplicities, you think evens touch, odds cross. One is odd, it's gonna cross. Two is even, it's gonna touch. Three is odd, it's gonna cross. Notice the touch and cross comes from the multiplicity, not from the zero. All together, to get the degree, I'm going to add up my multiplicities, one plus two plus three, which is six. Let's take a look at graphing that. So I made a little x, y plane, and I'm gonna start with putting on the zeros. So I have a zero at one, I have a 0 at negative 2, and I have a 0 at positive 4. Now, we said the overall degree is 6, and we have a leading coefficient that's negative. So you're putting together what we know about n behavior along with multiplicities now. So the negative says when I go to the far right, I am going to go down. Then I look at 4, which says it crosses. So when it crosses, it goes up and over to the next intercept, which is 1. At 1, it also says it crosses, so it's going to go over until it gets to the negative 2. And then at negative 2, it says it touches, which says it goes down. Now, this is really good because we can go back to what we know. Degree of 6 is even, evens match, so I can see this end behavior here is the same. Sometimes you might be asked to also find the y-intercept, which means you would plug in f of 0 and then get the value there, and then you would put it on as well. So I'm not going to do that on this one, but just to say it could be another point to use just to make your graph a little more accurate. Overall, we're doing a sketch. We're not doing a table of values, but we get a good idea of what the function looks like. Let's try a second one of those. I have f of x is negative 3 over 100 times x minus 1 squared, x minus 5 squared, and x plus 2 cubed. My first thing I want to do is make my little chart. So I'm going to have zeros. I'll have multiplicities, and then I'll say if it touches or crosses. 
So my first zero is at one, my second zero is at five, and my last one is at negative two. The multiplicities this time are two, two, three, so two, two, three. Two and two even, so that's gonna be touches. Three is odd, so it will cross. Overall, the degree comes from two plus two plus three, which is seven. So I have an odd one this time. Odd makes me think I'm gonna have opposite end behavior when I get to the graph. So we'll start with a little x, y axis. I brought our chart back over so we know our zeros are positive one, positive five, and negative two. Like last time, I look at the leading coefficient, which is negative, which says the function goes down. Then at five, because it's even, it's gonna touch, so it's just gonna kinda bounce around, go to the next intercept, which is one. One also has an even exponent, so it will do the same kind of thing, a bounce around, go to the negative two. Negative two has an odd multiplicity, which says it goes up. This matches our degree seven, because we talked about it would have opposite end behavior, which the graph does. So this time I'm going to go ahead and give you the graph and say construct a polynomial for your graph and we're going to leave these in factor form so we're not going to multiply them out. So what I want to notice is I have a zero at negative three, I have a zero at positive two, and I have a zero at positive five. At five it is crossing so I know this is going to be odd. At two it is touching so there's an even multiplicity and then at negative three it is also crossing which says I'll have another odd exponent. So I'm starting off with f of x is equal to, I have x plus three, I'm just going to leave it as power one, x minus two which I'm going to say is power two because it's touching, and then x minus five because it's crossing. Now this time I do want to say there could be some kind of coefficient at the beginning. So what I'm gonna to do to figure out this coefficient is I'm going to plug in zero because I know that f of zero is negative two according to the graph. So if I plug in zero, I get a times zero plus three, zero minus two squared, and zero minus five. This is supposed to be equal to negative two. So f of zero is a times three times four times negative five. Three times four times negative five gives me negative 60 times a is negative two. So a is negative two over negative 60, which gives me one over 30. So I can solve for the coefficient by using some other information. Sometimes it's the y-intercept, sometimes it might be just another point that we're given. So here, f of x is equal to positive one over 30, x plus three, x minus two squared, and x minus five. So let's try that again. When I look at this graph, I can see I have an intercept at negative three, an intercept at negative one, and an intercept at two. In each case, I can see that it's crossing the graph, which is the multiplicity is odd. To make it easy, I'm just gonna let that be equal to one. So I have these three zeros with multiplicities equal to one. I do notice it is falling on the right, which tells me there's going to be a negative coefficient for this function, and how I'm gonna figure that out is I will use the y-intercept of f of zero is positive six, and that's gonna help me find that leading coefficient. So we'll start by saying f of x is gonna look like a times x plus three, x plus one, and x minus two. Let's put the zero in. So f of zero is a times zero plus three, zero plus one, and zero minus two, and that's supposed to be a positive six. So three times one times negative two, that says negative six a is six, a here is negative one. The negative one does what we want it to. It makes it fall to the right. Overall, I can see my multiplicities one, one, and one give me a degree of three. That degree of three agrees with the graph where it has opposite in behavior. So let's write our final answer. F of x is negative x plus three, x plus one, and x minus two. Let's try that one more time. I have this graph that kind of looks like a M. 
First thing I notice, falling to the right, I'm going to have a negative leading coefficient. The end behaviors match, so that says that this should be an even function. So my degree is going to be 2, 4, 6, something like that. So let's go through and look at each of the intercepts. I have a 4, it crosses, a 3, it crosses, negative 2 crosses, negative 3 crosses. So I have these four numbers, which we can write as x plus 3, x plus 2, x minus 3, and x minus 4. So there are my factors. That will be f of x. And I know I have some kind of leading coefficient. And like the other times, we use the intercept to find it. So we say f of 0 is a times 0 plus 3 times 0 plus 2 times 0 minus 3 times 0 minus 4. And that's negative 3. So I have 3 times 2 times negative 3 times negative 4. All together, I have 72a is negative 3. So we'll divide. I get a is negative 3 over 72, which is negative 1 over 24. My overall function is f of x is negative 1 over 24, x plus 3, x plus 2, x minus 3, and then x minus 4. We're going to do the same thing, but this time instead of giving you a graph, I'm just going to give you the information. We're going to construct a function with degree 5 that has roots of multiplicity 2 at 3 and negative 4, and a root of multiplicity 1 at x equals 1. We also know that the y-intercept is 0, 18. So this feels kind of like the same thing, except before we were pulling all of this information out of the graph, now I'm just giving it to you. So we can start with f of x is equal to a, because I don't know the leading coefficient. I have x minus 3, but that's multiplicity 2. I have x plus 4, also multiplicity 2. And then x minus 1, which is multiplicity 1. If I plug in 0, I have a, 0 minus 3 squared, 0 plus 4 squared, and 0 minus 1, and that's supposed to be 18. This looks like a times 9 times 16 times negative 1 is 18. The 9 times 16 times negative 1 gives me negative 144. So to get a, I take 18 over negative 144, which reduces down to negative 1 over 8. I have f of x is equal to negative 1 over 8, x minus 3 squared, x plus 4 squared, and x minus 1. So we're going to do one more. This time, instead of giving you an intercept, I'm just giving you a point. So I have a function with degree 4. It has roots of multiplicity 2 at negative 2, and then roots of multiplicity 1 at 0, 3, and 1, and it contains the point 436. So f of x looks like a. You should start them all with a, right? And then I have x plus 2, power 2. I have just x, that's the x minus 0. I have x minus 3, and I have x minus 1. This time it says if you plug in 4, I have a times 4 plus 2 squared. I have 4. I have 4 minus 3. I have 4 minus 1 and that's supposed to be 36. 4 plus 2 is 6, 6 squared is 36. I just have 4. 4 minus 3 is 1, 4 minus 1 is 3. This is supposed to be 36. This together gives me 432 times a is 36. So a is 36 over 432 which works out really nicely to 1 over 12. Maybe try dividing like 432 by 36 or just look for common factors until you get this fraction reduced. Now I'm ready to put in my whole answer. f of x is 1 over 12. It's x plus 2 squared. It is x, x minus 3, and x minus 1. So I'm not going to ask you to multiply this out. That's a lot of work. I just want it left in factor form. So I hope that helps as we continue to talk about these polynomial functions. Good luck.